Hey, what kind of dog are you? Tell me a little bit about yourself while you drool all over the couch. Oh boy. Like many of you have asked, so this underlying question is, what is the DNA of Gary? Well, we're gonna test it. So, what we want you to do, we are officially gonna do the DNA test. We want you to comment below what you think Gary is. Put your best guess to it, and we're gonna feature some of you that get it right, if anybody does. Because we've had speculation within the rescue that we think maybe quarter pig, quarter rhino, quarter gorilla, quarter love ham. So we're gonna DNA test this boy and see what he is. Comment below what you think. What are you, huh? Love pig? Yeah, love pig? <laughs> It's another beautiful day at the Rescue Ranch. We are about to take you on a ride today and show you exactly what it is being here on the ranch, what it is with the dogs, feeding, meds, all that fun stuff. Oh, yes. So, yes, let's get started. First things first, we're going to go through and get each dog fed. So, this is Buddy, the kennel text dog. He's, he's a little special boy, oh my goodness. But he has to get his meds because he gets seizures. A lot of dogs get seizures, we can run through and talk about that. But his favorite thing to eat his meds with, the good stuff. So, and then we give Homer some of this too so he feels like he's special too. Because you are special. <laughs> but we go through, get each different dog their food that they're going to eat. We'll start to set it all out and get their meds. A lot of the different dogs eat different things. We get kibble given to us, which we like to feed better than kibble, but we rescue what you can afford compared to what you'd like to feed all the dogs. It's a little different. Some of the dogs have to be on special diets. Um, some of them get like dehydrated raw food, some of them get raw meat. Contrary to what a lot of people see these days, raw meat is the best for your dog. Yeah, we're not even gonna get into that. Are we? Are we, buddy? Okay, so we always like to go above and beyond for our dogs. Some of the stuff that we've showed you is my company boss, CBD. Um, CBD is a great thing for your dog. Uh, the CB1 and CB2 receptor system, they all work great for using it. So we've made special blends that we use for every single dog here at the ranch. Um, all of them get different dosings, but it's just because they're different sizes and they have different things going on. But we always have each dog their dose and then anybody that buys a bottle of our CBD you can donate a bottle to the different rescues or shelters so they can get the same benefits and not have to break the bank to take care of the dogs in that kind of way let's do it oh start chewing her bed these are supposed to be indestructible dog beds does that look very indestructible to you? The first thing they go for are the legs. But we have to keep replacing them, which can end up being pretty big costs on a rescue because they need beds. They destroy them, we gotta keep getting them. Here she goes, here she goes. Come on, come on, Anna. Right there, take your left. Good girl. It's the bunny. It's the Bob Bonnie. Ew. That a girl. Oh my goodness. Here. Okay, so Roman has been with us for quite a while. Um, I got him about three plus years ago and he got adopted out for a little bit. Um, his person ended up having personal issues, um, went to jail, all this crazy stuff. So all of our dogs always come back to us um, if anything happens. But the unfortunate thing with Roman is that he's a specialty needs. So that's harder to get adopted out. Now, Roman is deaf for one. So he went through learned sign language and everything, but he also has an immune disorder that doesn't allow, oh, yes, doesn't allow for his skin to heal. Um, we've gotten him a very, very long ways, but you see that he still has skin issues. Um, 
They'll get little ulcerated spots that we have to go in and treat. But the worst thing that had just happened is that Roman just got diagnosed with large cell lymphoma, which is cancer. So we're going to see about his appointments on Wednesday um, to see if we can get it removed, what we can go about it, um, and then treatment options. Um, we've upped his doses on CBD, we've been doing our different things, but at a certain point, um, depending on the diagnosis, is when we can figure out you know, where we're exactly gonna go with it. Uh, but he hasn't been feeling too well. Um, but with Roman, you know, his entire life with us, he eats a raw diet, so it's just burger, kale, blueberries, apples, and broccoli. But since getting his cancer diagnosis, he hasn't been feeling too well about eating as, as the same. So we're gonna go get him some stuff at the vet today because he's been on antibiotics, but he may need something a little bit stronger because um, his cancer is actually on his neck right here and then on his lip off to the side. But he is the biggest sweetheart you'd ever see. He's such a good boy. Just sucks to see him not feeling good. Yeah, let's get you some food. Let's see that. We do a little something special for him. Ooh. Usually just gets all of his his burger and stuff. But we can add some doggy bacon to it. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Nom, nom, nom. All right. So you never want to have to do these videos, um, but I definitely did not expect to have to do one so soon. But this is the story of. Roman. Um, so August 19th, 2016, um, I pulled a dog named Roman from uh, animal shelter here in LA. And when I saw the original picture of him, it just, I absolutely wanted to rescue him. But then I heard a couple of things behind it uh, that he was deaf, uh, all white, but he just, he was a dog that had severe disadvantages against him. So um, I just went, you know, it just went with my gut and my gut is what tells me what dogs I'm gonna go after and what we're gonna do. And it's a lot of times it's I want those case dogs that aren't gonna have a chance. Um, and Roman was definitely one of those. So I got him out and got him home and got him his first bath. And that's just when you could see the complete love bug, lovable, just everything in a dog that is love. <laughs> he, he was just everything. I had him for a good amount of time, brought him into my house. He met my cat um, that I still had at the time. He met my bird, Rio. Um, he met all of my dogs. He was just all around great dog. It's that dog that you think, like how could somebody just do this to you, you know? And it's the unfortunate part of rescues because you have to realize that no, not everybody's great, but you got to be one of those great people out there to make people want to be great. Son's a good boy. Son's a good boy. Ah! He got the treat. Oh, well. So, in these kennels, what we made them to be is a spot where we bring in dogs that have graduated from training. They're either dogs that have previous bite records, ones that are going to get euthanized at shelters. So, when a dog goes into a shelter, as a high risk or red listed or rescue only, it means that that dog is in severe danger of getting put down. It can be 24 hours, it can be same day, it can be anything. A lot of our dogs that we pulled are, are same day euthanization dogs where if we wouldn't have gotten them, they'd be put down. So what we do is we use these kennels. You've seen our past videos. They're all little tiny insulated homes, heater core floors, everything. They stay cool in the summer, hot in the winter. Um, they have their full kennel runs, auto water feed bowls and everything, so they're well taken care of. But what we do is we separate them from each dog so that they can train and then go into group classes and go to group socialization uh, while training, then come out on the other side, rehabilitated, ready to find a home. You know, some can still have some triggers, but that's why we have amazing adopters that want to work with them. Like our dog Blue, that he, you know, he came in as a red, 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 red zone aggression case. Um, against other dogs and now he can live a life with his mom and not be put down. That's why we're here. <laughs> this is one of our restricted dogs. He is named Arthur and he is a 
a low content wolf. So what we just showed you at Matt's place, Arthur is actually, <coughs> he's like either 13 or 19%. So he can have some issues, but he is restricted from anyone uh, besides myself and one other handler. Um, he actually looks all cute and fluffy and cuddly, but he does this thing where he'll bring you in to try and nip you and bite you. He's done it numerous times. That's why we say no one is allowed. Um, he actually tried to go to a wolf sanctuary for a little bit. I'm not sure if they knew how to deal with content because four people got bit and he got returned to us. We thought it was a good option for him, but yeah. So I'll show you a little bit of Arthur. Arthur, you want it? <laughs> He's focusing on you. That cute little boy until you get a little nip. Hey, Arthur, stop focusing on Brian. Stop picking on him. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, second part. Now we're over at my actual place um, where Boss Sanctuary will be. It'll be all animal rescue, but for right now, <laughs> stop bullying him. Come here. For right now, my place is where we keep severe case dogs. So, any dogs that are paralyzed, super emaciation, um, cancer, diabetes, blind, things like that, um, severe case dogs, like Goliath here. Goliath was actually, um, being dropped off in a U-Haul at Castaic Animal Shelter, and he was 86 pounds. Now, for he's a great name, first off, but for a great name, he is a big dog. Now, for him to be at 86 pounds is very drastic. So the family was dropping him off, just getting rid of him. He hadn't eaten for like three weeks. Um, he was just completely shut down. You could tell he was just in chaos. Like he, he couldn't really focus on anything. So, took him right out of the shelter, wasn't gonna leave him. So we got him, it took a while to get him um, eating again, because he went through so many different kinds of food and everything. Oh, there it is, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, there it is, okay, okay, okay. But, now, Goliath is a little over 160 pounds. So you see the difference of what he is, he needed to gain a lot of, okay, a lot of weight. But, he is actually one of the dogs that can I, can I talk? Can I? He's actually one of the dogs that I, that I adopted from my own rescue. Yes. So now we move on to which dog is here right now. This, you guys have already seen probably, is Penelope. She is one of the special needs dogs that's over here. She came to us paralyzed, so her back legs completely wouldn't work. She's incontinent, so she doesn't know when she's gonna potty or go to the bathroom. But now we've rehabbed her over the last few months to get her to start walking again. So she's using her back legs. Um, she's on a special diet, CBD, all these different things. Oh, oh, get your legs, come on. Stand up, there they are. There's the legs, there's the legs. Yeah. Good girl. Yeah. yeah. So she runs around with my pack over here. Um, but yeah, now for the second part, we will get everybody fed um, from even my retired dogs from training and service dogs and everything. But we start with these three. special reason that Goliath has his own room to eat except the fact that Batman my personal dog really likes food and we'll try to bully him he'll try to get up under his mouth to eat the food from under him so Goliath gets to eat in peace my dog. so we are running driving to the vet real quick to try and get um, 
some steroids, antibodies, and something else for Roman because Roman is not doing very good. He just got diagnosed with large cell lymphoma, uh, which is a form of cancer for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, and it starts attacking the dog's system. Now, Wednesday, because of COVID, it really messes up a lot of vet stuff. Because we can't get him into an oncologist uh, specialist for cancer until Wednesday. So he pretty much, it sucks because we have to sit there and just see him, you know, tough it out, see him suffer. And it's, you know, it's very unfair with how COVID's done things with vets. But regardless, we are going over, we're going to pick up some stuff like some steroids and everything that should help with inflammation and should get him feeling a little bit better until we can get him in on Wednesday uh, because the mass uh, on his neck is starting to expand a little bit. So we have to do something to intervene with that. And when it comes to cancer where tumors are fast developing, which means like Roman got cancer in three different spots all at once on his, on his mouth and then two under his neck, the two that just formed together. That's very fast for cancer to develop. That's very quick, it's rapid. So, you know, even boosting our CBD treatment won't help as much as actually getting him on steroids and stuff. So, we are getting over there. We've got 45 minutes to get there wait for them to bring out the meds and then get back before the 10 a.m. meeting because we have some some amazing people that are retired people that follow us coming to um, talk about helping us build the cabinets for the rest of the tiny homes uh, and sponsor doing that stuff so the cabinets countertops uh, maybe like some accents within the home so it should be really cool but I'll take some time show them around the ranch um, and yeah we shall see Okay, we're right out here, thanks. Oh, see how long it takes. Let's see how long it takes. Usually takes forever. COVID went and messed up all our timing. All right, so just finished the 10 o'clock meeting. I don't even know what time it is now. That was about a two hour meeting, but it was amazing. These people are so cool, they brought us they grow and harvest peppers and make different seasonings. That was cool enough, right? They custom make these pens for woodworking and metalworking, all this different stuff. That's all cool, but here's the main thing. They are a woodworking shop that builds cabinets and countertops and all that different sort of stuff. They're going to officially build all the stuff for the tiny homes for free. So they're gonna donate it, donate the time, everything. They're gonna do every single cabinet that we need. So. That's amazing. Getting support like that is such a cool thing. That's why when people come out, we like to spend the time with people. You know, we're close to the public, but people can make appointments. I like to bring people in, show what we do, and then it just ends up that people support like that. So thank you to that family. You'll see more of them in the next videos when we go to Tiny Homes, but we are on to the next thing. Brian, take a pinch. Take a pinch, Brian. Smells like steak. No, it smells like jerky. Ooh, that's <laughs> Oh, oh, that's spicy. <laughs> okay, so you've been with us today. You kind of see what we do. We have more work going on, more construction, more stuff behind the scenes. But right now it is time to get all the dogs walked, get them and their energy out before they go in for the night. Yes, I know. Like Gary, who has lots of energy. But hope you guys enjoyed. So make sure, if you want to see more of the ranch, you want to see more construction, all the stuff we do, subscribe, like, and we'll see you next time. Let's go, Gary. Let's go.